Dinosaur Adventure Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama. A great tour today. All them kids had a blast. Went through, took the real tour. We won't tell you all the details about that, but you need to come try that. Okay, let's see. If you want to join us? We're on a bunch of different channels. Let's see: Facebook, Twitter, Rumble, Brighton. Uh, still got four channels on YouTube and Odyssey, and they're all listed on drdiner.com, plus our own TV show program now, Kent Hovind Creation, scientist.lightcast.com. And you said something today, Joseph, it's up on they're developing the apps for... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a Roku app published today. Roku. You can find it on Roku. And it's coming on Fire and Apple. And coming on Fire and Apple. iOS and Android. IRS? iOS. iOS and Android. <laughs> Amen. Okay. <clears throat> a guide. Topic tonight, John chapter 16. Do you want a guide through life? How many have ever been lost on the highway trying to find something or lost in the woods or lost in your own house? Like what happened here, you know? Okay. A guide. One who shows the way by leading, directing, or advising. <clears throat> One who serves as a model for others as in a course of conduct. A person employed to conduct others as through a museum, a tour guide and give information about points of interest encountered. Ah, you want a guide? Talk about that tonight. Let's see, Genesis Baptist Church is our church right here. <clears throat> the new TV channel. Got it right, except I can take off the letters TV at the beginning. Okay, here we are. John chapter 16, April the 9th. Did you know today, or next week, is the eight-year anniversary of us getting this property? Eight years ago, nothing here but a bunch of mud and, and a dream. And it's been great. But today is the 100th day of the year. Yeah, what have you done for the Lord so far this year? 100 days, gone. And my wife and I's 1,349-minute anniversary. Yeah. Pretty near a life sentence, huh? Getting there. Getting there. <laughs> a long time. Now it's been great. Okay. We're an old-fashioned, independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church in Lenox, Alabama, where God gets the glory for his creation. Now, see, every Friday night, we're redoing my seminar series. It's going to take a long time. You want to get the series, it's 50 bucks for the whole thing. 18 hours on science and the Bible. <clears throat> part two, <clears throat> part one about the age of the earth is now going to be how many hours? Five? Yeah. Not five hours. We'll try to squeeze them all on one. How many DVDs will that take? All five on one DVD? Or do you get bigger DVDs or what? Okay. I'll let you handle that, brother. And then part two, Garden of Eden. We're going to redo all that. Why did they have to be 900? What was it like? We'll talk, we're covering more on that. This Friday night. Okay. I need somebody who can speak Vietnamese to come visit DAL. We have a neighbor a couple miles away that speaks Vietnamese, and I couldn't witness to him, so I want to. So come on down, spend a day or two. I'll take you up there. All I knew was chao ko, chao ba, chao om, which is hello for a man, hello for a woman, and hello for generic, I guess. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> so please come. Also, we need a carpenter to come visit DAL for a few days, help us finish a few projects. We can't keep up. Too many things going on. Or maybe stay for a month and help us build Noah's Ark. Little model, 20, 25 foot long model of Noah's Ark, but come on down, okay? You see that one? Post flood ark sale, used only once, definitely pet friendly. People send me the crazy stuff. Billy, you'll like this one. The world's first tool, made by Black and Pecker. You get it? It's a drill, a woodpecker. Never mind, okay. We're straight north of Pensacola, 70 miles. God ought to get the glory instead of evolution. Come visit, it's all free. Join us, our 777 Club, if you like what we're doing. So I want to support them for a dollar a day. Come on down. If you have any questions about that, contact Sandra, 855-BIG-DINO, extension 1, or email secretary at drdino.com. Verify everything is going to the right spot. So there we are, drdino.com, our website. Oh, man, one year, one week less. Let's see, that would be two. Do some, I should have a calculator for that one. We've been open a long time. Uh, over 25, I think it's over 30,000 visitors now from all 50 states and 77 foreign countries. Come on down. We do this because people just love the Lord and want to help us out. Okay, let's go back to slide number one and go to number 26, 30 to enter. John chapter 16, we left off in verse number eight. Verse nine, he's going to convict the world of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my father and you see no, no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. We talked yesterday, left off. There's prince of the world, as mentioned several times, back in chapter 12, chapter 14, chapter 16. The prince of this world, that would be Satan, okay? He's not the king, he's just a prince, and he's going to be dethroned here soon, okay? It says, the prince of this world cometh, in John 14, okay? 
Ephesians says, and you hath he quickened, I mean, quickened means made alive. How many have ever cut your fingernails down into the quick? You know, I'm talking about the living part, it ain't no fun. That's the expression. Down, yeah, down into the quick, all right? Who were dead in trespasses and sin. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. He's telling the Ephesian church, you guys used to walk the way the devil wanted you to walk, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That same evil spirit is working in those who disobey God's law, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh. He's Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus. He said, look, you know, you were at the same place as these heathen friends of yours were. Now, conversation is used in the Bible 20 times. Usually it means something like your manner of life, your conversation, those that be of upright conversation. That's an old English word. We don't use it the same way anymore. Today it means talking, okay? You need to get, uh, don't we have the book, Bobby, the language of the King James Bible? I don't need it now, but we sell that in our book, on our website, drdiner.com, in our bookstore. The language of the King James. Some words have changed meanings, like the word gay. You have respect him that weareth the gay clothing. When I was a kid, that meant happy. Mm, they don't mean that anymore. Okay, let's see. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Talk, the Bible talks about the rulers of darkness. So there's quite a bit in the Bible about the devil and how he's going to get dethroned and kicked out at the end. He loses. See, I read the last chapter. We win. He loses. Okay. So Paul said in, uh, John said in John, uh, Jesus said, John 16, I have many things, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You guys aren't ready. You can't handle it now. So you need the Holy Spirit in you to, uh, to understand some things and to bear this. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Jesus said, guys, I'm going to be executed. I'm going to be killed. I'm going to rise from the dead, go back to heaven, and send the Holy Spirit down. And he's going to be your guide. He's going to show you the future. This was a promise he made to his disciples, a guide. The word guide is used in the Bible quite a few times. In uh, Job chapter 38, a very controversial verse, canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? What is Maseroth? Now, if you read the book of Job, uh, in the first two chapters, Job lost everything. In the next few chapters, his four friends came to visit him, and they talked to Job and told him he must have sinned. Job, you did something wrong. Come on, confess. And Job knew he, was, he did not. Finally, in chapter 38, the Lord answered Job. In chapter 38, 39, 40, and 41, those four chapters is God speaking to Job. All God did was ask Job questions. Asked him questions. Job never answered one. Those are the kind of questions that you don't need an answer. It's obvious. The question is designed to make you stop and really think. God said, Job, can you bring forth Maseroth? What's a Maseroth? Well, that's a biblical term for the zodiac. Job, can you control the stars in the sky, the zodiac? Let's see. A biblical Hebrew word found in the book of Job, literally meaning constellations. Job, can you control the constellations? 88 constellations. I look up there, and all I see is a bunch of dots, okay? I don't see anything but a bunch of dots. But people have connected the dots and made constellations. How to navigate by the stars, a comprehensive guide for beginners, how to survive. The stars are up there, and they, if somebody is good at it, can navigate by the sun in the daytime and by the stars at night. For instance, the Big Dipper, the one on the bottom, the, it looks like a, a dipper like you dip water out with, okay? Uh, and the front two go up to, oh, this i got to go this way, no. Be there. Those bottom two stars down here, I'm looking backwards. Those two point to the North Star, which is the tail of the Little Dipper. So if you get lost at night, Big Dipper is easy to find. Follow that up. There's that, that way's north. Okay. There's lots of books on this controversial topic. The Witness of the Stars, God's Voice in the Stars, The Gospel in the Stars. Joseph Cease wrote that back in 1800s, 1882. They reprinted the book in 2015. Written in 1882 by one of the most popular Lutheran preachers of the day, this book draws on scientific, historical, and biblical sources. It shows that not astrology, but rather the gospel of Jesus can be seen in the stars. Cease believed that the heavens revealed God's glory, his plan of salvation. And this book that he wrote in the 1800s said we really should be starting with Virgo the Virgin, 
and ending with Leo the Lion. And our current uh, constellation, current uh, horoscope is a perversion of the original gospel story. I don't know. People argue about it. Is it, you know, is it or isn't? I don't know. It doesn't matter to me much. But it could be that Adam and Eve didn't have a Bible, so God gave them the gospel story and the stars. And Noah didn't have a Bible, not much of one. So God gave him the gospel story in, in stone. The Great Pyramid is, is one theory, okay? And then now we have the gospel story, uh, the whole Bible story right here. So but I, I don't know. Some people say it's not true. I'm not going to fight over it, okay? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth, and canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? More constellations. Who knoweth the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? God is simply asking Job questions. Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds, that abundance of waters may cover thee? Job, can you just make it rain? Canst thou send lightnings? Boy, it's a good thing I can't. How many of you can think of somebody that's lucky to be alive because you cannot send the lightning? Can you think of somebody? No. Okay. Good thing God. Can they may go and say unto thee, here we are. Is God telling you, you can use electricity to send a message? Let's see, television, radio. Radio, email, telephone, TV. I don't know. Interesting verse. Okay. Canst thou guide Arcturus? For Psalm 25. The meek, he will guide in judgment. And the meek, will he teach his way. I ask God many times a day, Lord, would you please guide me? Lord, I need to know what do you want? Show me. Even little decisions. Lord, show me what to do. We were praying. I drove for the last three weeks. I've been driving, looking at old Jeeps, trying to find one to buy for the ministry here because we got the one old Jeep, an 07 model, and uh, I'd like to get another one, have a fleet of two. The guy called me today. He said, Brother Hovind, love your ministry. My sister and I are going to buy you a Jeep. He sent me a picture. I don't know what year it is yet. I'll find out. And i bring it down tomorrow, I think, from North Carolina. Drive it down. So praise God. Here I was praying, Lord, guide me to buy one. Instead, he said, son, don't buy one. Yeah, but Lord, we need one. I want one. <laughs> okay. Thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me. All through the book of Psalms you see him asking, God, would you please guide me? How many have ever made a dumb decision in your life because you took bad advice or you didn't take any advice? Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. That's a cool verse. How many of you parents were able to guide your children with your eye? Hey, son, you know what to do? You know, take out the garbage, make your bed, whatever it is. You guide them with your eye. He said, Lord, I want you to guide me with your eye. Just look, tell me what to do. For this God of, is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. <coughs> but it was thou, a man mine equal, a guide, mine acquaintance. Psalmist prophesied one of his best friends betrayed him. And this thing, same thing happened with Jesus. This verse was quoted about Judas betraying Jesus. Judas guided the bad guys to Jesus. And he said, the one that I kiss, that's the one. Betrayed him with a kiss. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. So a good man takes care of his business with discretion. Be discreet about it. Which forsaketh the guide of her youth. Proverbs chapter 2 talking about a woman dressed up like a harlot, going downtown, dressing, you know, uh, advertising. He said, this woman has forsaken the guide of her youth. She knows better. She knows better. Hmm. Good chapter, chapter 2, for your parents to read to your daughters. Which have no guide, overseer, or ruler. This is talking about the ant. He said, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. They have no guide, overseer, or ruler. I stopped with a group of kids up there today, like I do several times every, a day on my tour. Got the kids out, got around the big ant mound, took the machete out, and cut a piece off the side of the ant mound. Instantly, all the ants jumped to work. Nobody has to tell them what to do. They have no guide, overseer, or ruler. Solomon said, you better go consider the ant. And I always tell the kids when I do that part of the demonstration, I say, kids, if you always have to be told what to do, you are dumber than an ant. I've asked kids many, many times, would you want 10 of you to work for you in your company? No. Well, then you better go fix the guy in the mirror, right? The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Proverbs. 
Hear thou, my son, be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Integrity shall guide them. Integrity, the concept of consistency of actions, values, methods, measures. Integrity is the quality of being honest and showing a consistent, uncompromising adherence to strong moral, ethical principles. When somebody has integrity, that integrity will guide them. They just, they'll come up to a decision and they just automatically, there they see, you know, somebody's purse laying there wide open on the countertop and they could steal stuff. But if they have integrity, it will guide them to say, no, I don't do that. Does your, do you have any integrity? Does it guide you to not make dumb decisions, to not steal, to not look at the wrong thing? That's in ethics, integrity is regarded as the honesty and truthfulness or earnestness of one's actions. Integrity can stand in opposition to hypocrisy. They have no guide overseer. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. Hear thou, my son, and be wise. Guide thine heart in the way. Son, you better guide your own heart. Make sure it stays right. They, they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor, nor sun smite them. He hath mercy on them. He shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. God, through Isaiah, is telling the people, God will guide you right to where the springs of water are. The Lord shall guide thee continually. Isaiah, Isaiah is an amazing book. We've got to cover that someday. Okay. Wilt thou not from this time cry, my father, thou art the guide of my youth? Jeremiah is also a fascinating book. You ought to read Jeremiah to study what's happening now in Israel. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Micah is what we call the minor prophets. There are five major prophets, big books, you know, Ezekiel and Isaiah, and Jeremiah. And then there are minor prophets, are the smaller ones. It just means the book is shorter, okay? It's a couple chapters. Guide me to give light to them that sit in darkness and a shadow of death. Guide our feet in the way of peace. Do you want to be guided? I remember many times in my life I've had big decisions to make. I was living in Longview, Texas, had my own house completely paid for, built it myself. Two acres down in the woods and around the creek behind there, great place to play. A little go-kart or a mini bike, a three-wheeler. Back in those days it was a three-wheeler. And then now they figured they're unsafe, so they made four-wheelers. We had the three-wheeler. My kids were, I think, uh, five, six, seven, a year and two weeks apart, family planning. And then uh, uh, it, I could walk across the creek and go to school, I, where I taught school. I mean, it was ideal. Dead-end street, no traffic, perfectly safe place, wonderful neighborhood, knew all the neighbors. And one of the students that came to the, I was teaching a college class, and one of the students in my college class was from California. He told his dad in California, he said, Dad, you've got to hire Kent Hovind to come be the school principal and teach science and math at the school. So the dad called me. Would you like to come look? I said, well, okay. So the wife and I flew out there, and they, they wined us and dined us and looked everything over and made me an offer, like triple what I was making in Longview for money. And it was, I, I looked at the phone book in that city, Fairfield, California, and there were just very few Baptist churches. Came back, looked at the Longview, Texas phone book, and there's like 800 of them, you know. They don't need me in Longview. They need me in California. I like it here, but so I had a decision to make. So I wrote this poem, The Road of Life. Here's, if you can see it on here. The road of life, it seems to me, is not as smooth as it should be. Sometimes the road seems all uphill, like swallowing a bitter pill. Sometimes the bumps get really rough and you give up or else get tough. But the hardest part, it seems to me, is when you drive up to a T. You must go left or else go right. And that's what makes my stomach tight. Decisions seem so hard to make that I must choose which road to take. That choice determines where I'll be and also my whole family. I asked for help from those around. But their view, too, was from the ground. And so I asked the one I knew who up in heaven has a view of all the roads that I might take to keep me right for Jesus' sake. I prayed and prayed, and then I chose. Was I right? My father knows. But he won't say too much to me. He saves it for eternity. And then I think that he will say, my son, you could have chosen either way. I'm more concerned about your heart than where you go or when you start. It's not so much which way you go, it's what you do with what you know. You may go left or right or straight. I'll meet you at the pearly gate and welcome you with open arms and keep you safe from all life's harm. I suppose I'll wonder every day, what if I'd gone the other way? But this time I'll just do my best and pack my stuff and head out west. Sometimes you've got to make decisions. You say, Lord... Guide me. He said, how can I except some man should guide me? In the book of Acts, the, the, the guy, Philip is in the chariot with the eunuch, and he said, do you, he said, do you know how to go to heaven? Do you know where, where you're going? You know, do you understand this book you're reading? He's reading the prophet Isaiah. 
And he said, how can, how can I understand this and so somebody guide me? How many had to have a teacher guide you to learn, say, algebra or geometry or trigonometry or something, okay? Art thou confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind? He said, I will that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, not troll the house, you guide the house, okay? Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Guides used in the Bible 23 times, okay? Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest thy in the law, and makest thy boast in God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. You are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind. Paul writing to the Jews here, you guys are confident that you know the Bible. A light to them in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore that teachest another, teachest thou that not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Some people want to be a guide on morality, and they don't have it themselves. Teachers and parents, are you guiding your students to believe this kind of junk? How many of you parents are letting your kids learn this evolution stuff without opposing it? Whale evolution. Come on, that's a bunch of baloney. Evolution of common ancestry because of comparative anatomy. Huh. What a stupid thing to teach kids. We have comparative anatomy because we have the same designer. Then came the disciples and said, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after you heard they heard this? He said, Every plant which my father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind, leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. That's the truth. And some of you are letting your kids follow a blind teacher. You think, you think an evolutionist can teach them real science? Absolutely not. They teach them propaganda, a religion called evolution. The geologic time scale. I ask them all the time, guys, if, if the top layer is supposedly younger, where did it come from? They never answer. Well, it got moved over from here to here. Well, then, it, then it's still the same dirt. It's still the same age. Shuffling a deck of cards doesn't make the top card younger, does it? All the dirt in the world is the same age, whether it's 6,000 or 6 trillion. It's all the same age. There is no geologic column. You letting your, some teacher guide your students to believe that? You want this guy to guide you about how to be healthy and use your time wisely? He'd be a good guide, wouldn't he? You want this guy to guide you about making wise investments in life? Yeah, invest your money, own your own property. I don't think he'd be a good guide on money. You want this guy to guide you on how to look good for a job interview? He cut his lower lip so his tongue could stick out down here instead and then cut the tongue up the middle. Do they look in the mirror? Would you hire one of those to work for you? Would, would any restaurant hire them to be the wait, waiter? They help you through it? What would you like to eat? You want fries with that? You want large Coke or a small Coke? Do you want him to guide you about how to drive a truck? Uh, no. Do you want them to guide you on how to live a godly life? I don't think you want that for a guide. You want R. R. Nelson to guide you about how to know real science? He thinks the whole universe fit in a dot smaller than a period. And we all came from a rock. And when I said, we all came, you believe you came from a rock, he said, nobody ever believes we came from a rock. Yes, you do. I showed him 50 times in the textbooks. Don't you, R. N., you believe you come from a rock. You want this guy to guide the design of your bathroom in your house? Come on, let this guy design your bathroom. Hmm. Be careful who you choose to follow. <laughs> Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Lead me in the truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of mine enemies. If you keep this as your attitude, Lord, I want you to teach me. I want you to guide me. You'll be a success in life. For thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me. Send out thy light and truth, let them lead me, let them bring me into the holy hill to thy tabernacles. And if there be any wicked thing in me, lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, would you please lead me? That ought to be your prayer constantly. Teach me to do thy will, lead me in the, to the land of uprightness. Hmm. I beseech you, be ye followers of me, Jesus said, or Paul said in 1 Corinthians. Be followers of me as I am of Christ. Dads, are you, you want your kids to follow your example? 
Mom, do you want the daughters to follow your example? I don't know. You've got to answer to God for that one. Jesus, walking by the sea, saw two brothers, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net. They were fishermen. He said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. They dropped their nets and followed him. Huh. Who, 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 who's your guide? Okay. I have many things to say, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he shall guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. And I want the Lord to guide me. You know how he guides me most of the time? Through his word. I've read the Bible so much. Now, believe me, I don't know it all, but I read it, read it, read it a bunch of times. And oftentimes when I get ready to make a decision, a verse pops into my mind. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Wow, that's how God will guide you with his word. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Proverbs chapter 4. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They don't have the light to guide them through their life. And thine eyes shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. That's what I want. God, would you guide me? So I, all I know to do is read the word. He already wrote it. And then different verses pop into mind. Oh, wow. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Okay? You want God to guide you? He shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. We'll take up a John chapter, six, chapter 16, verse 16, uh, next Monday, uh, Sunday. Okay, any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Time for a drink. Go ahead, brother. Question for today. 144,000 are saved with the mark of the Lord, but the rest get pained by the bugs for mouse for months. Sounds like it means months. Well, only a few get the mark, but not the rest of the world. Jada, good question. I don't know the, for sure the answer. I went through that carefully, as carefully as I knew how, on my video series, Whoa, What on Earth is About to Happen? And my book that I wrote on the topics, uh, same thing, What on Earth is About to Happen? And my chart that I made, What on Earth is About to Happen? I really want to know, and I could not figure some of it out. So I, whenever I come to something, I say, look, here's, here's the theories I'm aware of, but I don't, know the, I don't know the answer. So I don't think I can give you a solid answer to that question. I get leery when somebody knows the answer to everything. I just, I think maybe they might be making something up. <laughs> okay. Uh, horse plus donkey equals mule to argue for evolution. But wouldn't this prove creation instead? Since it shows mutations are leading to infertility. Well, that's it. It's still got four legs and the tail on the back and the nose on the front. I mean, it still looks like a horse. It's the horse kind. It's obviously, not, it's obviously not a butterfly. But see, the atheists will look at that and say, wow, look at that, boys and girls. The horse is related to the butterfly. This is the charts they use in our public school textbook. Because they see varieties of horses and varieties of you know, jackass and donkey and stuff like that, therefore they're related to a butterfly? There are certain kinds of stupid or unfixable, and that's got to be one of them. Okay, well, next question. Uh, a study about N sample and egg sample. Well, that's an interesting study. Okay. N is plural. Each one person is an egg sample, and several people are N samples. Hmm. Okay. Maybe so. I'll do some more study on that. I thought N sample was something internal, external was egg ex sample, something external. Maybe not. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'll check it out. Okay. Let's see. Sir sniffs a lot. You hear about the Calvinist scoreboard manufacturer. Their scoreboard posts the final score at the beginning of the game. <laughs> That's hilarious. For those that don't know, John Calvin, back in the 1600s, he taught God already knows everything can happen. He's already decided, and he wants some people saved. He doesn't want others saved. And If you want to get saved, it's too bad if God doesn't want you. That's heresy. Okay? Thank you. That was funny. I like that. They also believe anything that happens, it was already predestined. Like the Calvinist fell all the way down the stairs, got to the bottom and said, boy, I'm glad that's over with. Like, like you had to go through it. Like, ha. Did you see they found a petrified book in Australia? They said it was 350 million years old. I saw that big, huge book, great big book, uh, petrified book. It's not 350 million years old. But yeah, I've seen that. Thank you, sir. I'll send it again to, uh, I'll send it to uh, secretary at drdino.com. In case, make sure it's the same one I got. If it's a great big book, petrified. I've seen it. Okay, any more?
Okay. Thank you. I, I, want it, I want my material to be helpful. I want to help people. I tell people, I've told them for 35 years now, I want to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. And then if you're saved, not saved, I'm going to try to get you saved. And if you're saved and you're not doing anything for the Lord, I'm going to try to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Find something to do. Okay, got more there. Bigger font. Wow, look at that. My kids wanted to know if it's possible pterodactyl might still exist. I believe so. There have been quite a few sightings of pterodactyl. Uh, people claim they've seen one. So I think it's certainly. Yeah, from the interview the other day. Just the possibility of dinosaurs still living drives the atheists crazy. And I tell you right now, I predict if you caught a dinosaur and put it in the Brooklyn Zoo, they would put a sign up there that says, boys and girls, this one survived for 70 million years. They would never consider changing their religion. Wouldn't even consider it. Short answer. How do you tell someone who believes in Islam that the Quran is the book of Satan? Uh, we have quite a few books on our website, drdino.com, dealing with the nation of Islam and the, the, the Quran and the teachings. Um, the Quran says that the Bible is, is without error. And the Bible says Jesus was God in the flesh. And when you point those verses out to them, they, they get mad. Like, it just completely destroys their religion. That's, that's not my battle to fight with Islam, but I, you know, I, like I want to know the truth. And if they had it, I'd follow it, but it's not the truth. Okay? Sure, a few more. Hey, can't love your ministry. What's your opinion on the angel of the Lord in Genesis that speaks to Hagar? Um, there are quite a few times in the Old Testament where an angel came and talked to somebody. Some people call it a theophany, a pre-appearance of Christ. They think Jesus came down in, in form. Other, it says an angel, though. God can do that if he wishes, so I don't, I don't have an answer for that one. I think it did. One guy told me his wife was an angel. She was always up in the air harping about something. I'm not, I'm not sure what he meant by that. But Okay. If God exists outside time, space, matter, how can he rest on the seventh day? Well, he, he can enter into our time anytime he wants. He can enter into a body. He can, he, but he's not limited by our time, space, matter. That's the whole point. And he didn't rest on the seventh day because he was tired. He rested because he was done. And to set a pattern for us to take a, you know, six days of work. What did Jesus say? The meek will inherit the earth in the Sermon on the Mount. That's correct. The meek shall inherit the earth. The Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5. What's there, is there a question there? What does it say they will inherit? What did Jesus say? In the, okay, that doesn't make I don't didn't follow that one. All right? One more and let's quit, brother. Tomorrow night, whack an atheist. And we're looking for more debates. So some of you students challenge your teachers. Would you please, if they believe in evolution, say, would you please call to for a debate? If they say no, tell Joseph, add them to the list. The following professors refuse to debate. Can we still speak in tongues? Expedite and Klein edition Deutsch, je parle très peu français. Speak a little Spanish, a little German, a little, I knew a little a Hebrew. He worked at the store downtown. Uh, let's see. No, I think it, that the gift of tongues is, is, is ceased. Uh, that was for the transition from the New Te Old Testament to the New Testament. I've said many times, if that's really for today, if these gifts are for today, why don't they raise the dead? That was also one of them, you know. Speaking in tongues is the easiest one to fake. Watch my video number seven. We had a guy come on who speaks fluent. Uh, he was a missionary in some country, uh, and he spoke a language that somebody jumped up in a Pentecostal church and started jibber-jabbering, claiming he was speaking in tongues, claiming he was praising God. And the guy said, look, I, I, I was a missionary in the country where that language is from, and you were cursing and praising the devil. Watch video seven for more on that. Okay, seminar part seven. Thank you so much.